This is a last minute AP review, part three. Uh, so let's look at number one here. A particle moves along the x-axis. Velocity of the particle is modeled by uh, strictly decreasing twice differentiable function. So it's a smooth curve um, that's at least degree two or higher. We see the velocity is always decreasing. So all these values are gonna keep decreasing from three to one. Right, so everything in between is, is also decreasing as well. Uh, Right, meters per second is our units of measure here for, for our velocity. Uh, select values of V of T at specific times are given. And it is known that at time T equals 7, uh, the particle's uh, position is 3 units to the right of the origin. Okay, so uh, part A, estimate V prime of 2.5, V prime of 6. Now, a V prime is the derivative of velocity, which is really acceleration. So it's, it's not asking for the exact value of acceleration, it's asking for the estimation. So we know that the definition of acceleration is rate of change of velocity over change in time. So it's also asking for approximation. So to get from velocity to acceleration, uh, using approximation, we use slope. So uh, change in velocity over change in time. We take our, uh, so if we want to approximate uh, the slope, of the, our velocity at 2.5, we choose the two closest order pairs, and we do change in velocity over change in time. So 1 minus 3 over two, 3 minus 2, and that gives us negative 2 over 1, which is negative 2. Our units of measure is meters per second squared. All right, meters per second per second is the rate of change of velocity. So meters per second per second uh, reduces and cleans up to be just meters per second squared. Uh, the next part, v prime of 6, we want to find the slope of uh, velocity at six. Our best approximation is using the two order pairs closest to it. So we do change in velocity over change in time. Negative six minus zero over seven minus five, which is negative six over two, which is negative three meters per second squared. Right, part B, uh, state whether a particle is speeding up or slowing down. So if we're speeding up or slowing down, to determine that, we compare signs between velocity and acceleration. Um, all right, so at 2.5, right, we know that our uh, velocity is uh, increasing. Or sorry, our, our velocity is positive uh, because between three and one, we know that it's going to have it's decreasing, but it's ne it's not going to dip down to a negative and then rise again. So we know it has to be still. It's going to be in the positive region. So our velocity is positive. And acceleration is negative um, because our approximation tells us at uh, acceleration at 2.5 is negative 2. So if we have positive velocity and negative acceleration, opposite signs indicate our particle must be slowing down. Okay. At t equals 6, velocity is uh, t equals 6 between 0 and negative 6, our velocity is going to start dipping into the negative region. So we know our velocity is negative, but acceleration is also negative. So because velocity and acceleration are both uh, giving the same signs, they're both negative, we, can, we know that our particle must be speeding up at t equals 6. All right, part C, a particle's position is modeled by the function p of t. Write an equation of the tangent line to the graph of p at t equals 7. Use the tangent line to approximate p of 8. First thing is write an equation of tangent line at, at t equals 7. We know that the position at t equals 7 is 3, so that's our order pair. p of 7 is equal to 3. Uh, we're going to create our tangent lines, so we also need slope. So p prime, which is basically the velocity of the particle at t equals 7. Right? Velocity is negative 6, so we know p prime of 7 or v of 7 is equal to negative 6. We have our order pair, we have our slope, and we put in the point slope form. And once we put in the point slope form, we solve for y. And when we solve for y, this really represents our position function. So I'm going to replace y with p of t, and then x with t since um, time is the uh, independent variable. So once we have our position uh, equation represented as a linear function, then we're going to use this to approximate p of 8. So we just plug 8 in for t and clean that up, negative 6 times 1 is negative 6, plus 3 is negative 3. Part D is the estimate in part C, right, is this value uh, under or over approximation for P of 8. 
Now, uh, the way we can determine this is we can look at uh, whether this is part of a concave up or concave down graph. Now, we know that our um, velocity is strictly decreasing. So if our velocity is strictly decreasing, then we know that v prime of t must be uh, less than 0. Okay. So if our v prime of t is less than 0, then we know that we're dealing with a concave down graph. Right? If we're dealing with a concave down graph, um, we know that our linear uh, graph is always going to, uh, linear function is always going to sit above the curve, and because it's above the curve, our tangent line approximation is going to give us an overestimate or an over an est uh, overestimation. Part E, uh, Claire uses a left Riemann sum of three subintervals to approximate the definite integral from 2 to 7, the V of t. So we have a decreasing function here. Is the approximation under or over with left Riemann sum? So we can visualize this by graphing. So if we graph our function with uh, the upper left corner uh, reaching the graph, we can obviously tell that these rectangles are uh, sticking above the curve. The areas of these rectangles is going to be higher than the actual area between the curve and the x-axis. So since our velocity is strictly decreasing, left Riemann sum will produce an overestimation. Okay, part F. Another particle, Q, is also moving along the x-axis. So we have Q of x represented by this equation here. State open intervals where particle P and Q are moving in the same direction. So let's create a velocity sign line for this position function Q of x. So Q prime, the derivative is just 5 minus 2x. Uh, to, to, find, uh, to create our velocity sign line, we first have to figure out where velocity is 0. And then we can create our sign line using that critical point and then test the intervals. So uh, if we set our velocity to 0, we get 2x equals 5, x equals 5 halves, or 2.5. Uh, I'm going to place that onto my uh, velocity sign line, but we only care about values between 2 and 9. So I'm going to uh, bookend uh, my velocity sign line with 2 and 9 on either end. 2.5 goes in here, and now I'm just going to test values. So I'll test 2.1. If I plug 2.1, uh, that's going to give me a, a value less than 5, so I'm still, still going to end up with a positive velocity. And then if I plug in the value to the right of 2.5, let's say 3, so 2 times 3 is 6, 5 minus 6 is negative 1. So we have our velocity sign line. Um, our uh, particle Q is moving to the right from 2 to 2.5, stop, and turns around, uh, moves to the left from 2.5 to 9. Okay. Now P prime of T. P prime of T, uh, we know that our velocity is going to be positive. It's going to keep decreasing until it hits zero. So we know that's going to be where it changes direction because after that, it's going to start being in the negative uh, velocity. I'll uh, move to the left. So moves to the right, stops at t equals 5, turns around, and moves to the left. So we know our critical point is at 5, and then positive velocity to the left and negative velocity to the right of 5. So I'm lining up uh, particle q and p's uh, velocity. And I just want to line up to see when are they moving in the same direction. So we see that they are both in the uh, moving in the positive, uh, moving to the right in the positive direction between two and two point five. Right, we're looking for consistent um, signs for both these particles. Uh, between two point five and uh, five, we see one's positive, the other's negative, so that doesn't match. But from five to nine, we see that they're both going to be going in the negative direction to the left. So we have two intervals where the t particles are moving in the same direction, from 2 to 2.5, mo mo moving to the right, and then from 5 to 9, moving to the left. Okay. Now, uh, this is a subtle thing here, but at 2, the part these two particles are already moving at 2. So we need to include this as it's already moving to the right. We're going to have to include the 2 as the interval from moving to the right. And moving left, at 9, the particle is still moving, right? We're stopping the, uh, the time at t equals 9, but the particle is still moving past 9. It's, it's not stopping at 9. So it's still moving to the left. We have to include that t value less than or equal to.